Okay, I confess, that wasn't my house. <laughs> but Christmas season, it's always fun to see the, 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 the decorations, and, and uh, I, I really like the, the, the video of seeing all the Christmas tree lights that people really go all out, right, and, and create amazing things. Lots of celebrations, gift giving, you know, the, the generating this really good, bright spirit. And of course, we want to remember, you know, the reason for the season, right, why, why we're here. So every year I like to um, start off the, the Christmas season with um, talking about and reminding us all that God went through to be able to send uh, Jesus. So that's going to be the, you know, the, the focus. And the next couple of weeks, um, we'll be focusing, really diving into depth and the um, the amazing, amazing thing of God sending the Messiah 2,000 years ago and the reason for our celebrations right now. But before I do that, I want to make sure you're all awake So, and get you in the, the Christmas season. I need you to name these Christmas carols. So, Bleach Jewel. What Christmas carol could that possibly be? Mmm. Bleached is white. And Yule is Christmas. A white Christmas. Okay, so you get how this goes, okay? So how about Righteous Darkness? What song is that? Mmm. Righteous is holy. Holy night. Oh, holy night. All right. Okay. Arrival. 2,400 hours, weather cloudless. 2,400 hours is midnight. It came upon a midnight clear, weatherless and cloudless, right? How about far off in a feeder? Away in a manger, all right, we have a winner. Nocturnal noiselessness. Silent night. Silent night. Very good. And how about a quadruped with a vermilion proboscis? I'm not sure that's how you pronounce that. Quadruped. That means something that has four legs. And vermilion, I think, is kind of red. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Ranger. Okay, very good. Give, give yourself a hand. <laughs> well done. Okay, I think you need to do some work on your Christmas carols, okay? So make sure you're listening to Christian carols all month long, right? You can't help it if you listen to contemporary Christian radio, right? So this is a season for remembering all the preparation that God made in the world in order to send the Messiah. So, without understanding the, the divine principle, the unification principle, I was always kind of confused. You know, why did God take so long to send Jesus, to send the Messiah? I mean, you know, does he just enjoy watching people suffer? <laughs> you know, and through the divine principle, we understand and appreciate um, history. In all the ways that God has worked because God gave us responsibility and doesn't take that responsibility away from us. And so understanding the patterns of history and how the reasons that God doesn't intervene so that we can truly become lords over creation as God designed us to be. To be truly rulers, not always the, the, the children or the servants, but the ones that God can really partner with in creating an amazing and wonderful world. So, the exposition of the divine principle has three main areas that it always focuses on, helps bring us into focus, you know, starting off with what was God's ideal. Understanding God's original ideal, that's our starting place. And what's the, that ideal? Loving families, individuals that know God, and a loving relationship with all the things of the universe, all things of creation. Sounds good. That's not the world we're living in, right? <laughs> I know myself, I'm working on that first blessing still, you know, to be a person of true love, right? But then also expand that to our family and the community, 
and then our relationship with things of creation. I, I think some of that dominion over creation and, and some of those amazing lights and decorations people are putting out. You know, that, what joy God must feel in our creativity. You know, how creative people can be. It's a wonderful thing. But we know we're not living in that world. So understand the root of the fall. The loss, really, of true love. The core of everything in our life comes down to a loss of that original love that God designed us to grow through and to live and experience. Fortunately, God never gives up on us. You know, and immediately God worked to try to bring us back to what we should originally be without taking away our responsibility, helping us, nourishing us to grow. And the key to that is the Messiah. We need, the, we need Christ in order to be able to solve the problems. So I want to I'll read, I'm going to use a lot of content from um, uh, a speech that Mother Moon gave and also some excerpts from the, the Unification Principle. So this is from a, um, a speech that Mother Moon gave in Vienna, Austria. It was the 50th anniversary of the, the missionaries pioneering in Austria. So let me read. Heaven's providential history has been one of sadness and suffering. In the beginning, God began his creation and created the first human beings to realize his big dream. He also bestowed responsibility on the first humans. Yet, they went off track. And God's great dream could not be realized. The plan of the omniscient and omnipotent God remains the same at the beginning and at the end. Hence, he cannot abandon his plan even if he encounters a failure. So this is from the Exposition of the Divine Principle. It's actually the, the third chapter, Eschatology, which talks about immediately after we understand the ideal, what went wrong, God immediately is working to bring about the end of the evil world. Eschatology is the end times. So let me read from the, the Exposition of the Divine Principle. So this is uh, speaking about God. God declared through Isaiah, I have spoken and I will bring it to pass. I have purposed and I will do it. Meaning that despite the fall, God has been working to fulfill his promise to us through the providence to restore these blessings. Talking about the three great blessings and purposes of our life. He sent Jesus to restore us to our original ideal state. Again, this is from um, uh, the Chun Sung Gyeong and speaking about our mission, how providential history does not stop. This is, again, this is from Mother Moon. For this reason, as explained in the Bible, heaven worked for the long period of 6,000 biblical years to enlighten people. How sad and excruciating that course has been. It took 4,000 years to find and establish a people within the fallen world. Why was it so hard? It was because they were not aware of the fact that all mistakes must be indemnified. All mistakes have to be corrected, have to be fixed. God is not going to leave anything broken. In order for God's ideal to be realized, everything has to be fixed, even in our own lives. The problems that we have, the challenges we have, if we don't fix them in our life, guess what? It gets passed on to the next generation. Some of the confusing challenges that we're facing now, those are things we inherited from our lineage, from our ancestry. So God's plan is for human beings to be responsible and to be co-creators with God of an amazing, wonderful world filled with God's love. So, God started right away in Adam's family. Right? And I'm going to run through 4,000 years really quickly. 4,000 biblical years. With Cain and Abel, God had them set up in the relationship, same like the archangel and Adam and Eve. They asked them to make this offering. So, Abel makes his offering successfully. Cain's not... God says, don't worry, if you're faithful, you'll be fine, but if you're not, Satan's after you. Well, Satan got to him, he kills Abel. So God's plan, right there in the beginning, he had hope. Oh, I can fix it right away, in the first family. 
The Messiah could have come right in that, that next generation. But because of that failure, all that was lost. It was prolonged. And then, 1,600 biblical years later, we have Noah. And he comes. Amazing faith. Builds this incredible ark, 120 years. Anyway, I don't know if I could do anything for 120 years. But he did. And he was faithful and built this ark. Unfortunately, his children couldn't unite with him. And so even that foundation was lost and prolonged for another time until Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And even Abraham had problems. You know, he tried, he, God gave him the simple course to make this offering, this animal offering, and he, and he didn't successfully do it. As a result, he had to go an even more serious course. He was asked to sacrifice his precious son. Of course, God didn't want to kill his son, but he needed to see his faith. And even Isaac's faith. Isaac trusted his dad. Even if willing, he is, this is God's will, he was willing. So together, they created the foundation. So Isaac inherited that, and then Isaac's children, Esau and Jacob, finally, they restored that Cain-Abel relationship. They had the same feeling. Cain was jealous of Abel. Esau was jealous of Jacob. But they embraced. And this is the huge victory in God's providence. God now has a chosen people, a family, that now he can work through. So precious. That's, that's why the Jewish people are so important in God's province and in all of human history. You know, God has worked and continues actually to bless the Jewish people. So, let me uh, read. This is from um, one of Father Moon's uh, speeches called Jesus, Whom God Wanted to Find. To find Jesus, heaven went through all kinds of hardships. And after the fall, until his, uh, af- from after the fall, until his arrival. In order to attend this one man, the chosen people went through a road of unspeakable persecution. And the road of death in their historic course. They repeated numerous times the history of struggle. Where they fell down, stood up, stood up and fell down. And stood up again. So we see this pattern in history. God is working through the chosen people, giving them opportunities over and over again. Oh, we have that in our own lives, where we have seem to make the same mistakes over and over again, right? It's because God gives us an opportunity to get it right each time. So let's look at the history. From after that, uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, they spent 400 years of slavery in Egypt because of the, the um, failure of Abraham's original offering. 400 years, but then at the end of that time, God sends Moses. An amazing thing, Moses leads the chosen people out of the, the, um, out of the land of Egypt. Unfortunately, it could have been a short course if they'd been faithful. When he first, first God called him, if the people had recognized and responded to him instead of saying, oh no, are you going to kill me? They lost it. But that, that right there, if they'd united, ah, 21 days, they would have been in the land of Canaan. Amazing. But failed. So 40 years later, God calls Moses back. This time they respond. But then they go wandering through the wilderness. And again, they are faithless. Up and down. Up and, whenever they're up, they do really well. God can bless them. But when they're faithless, Satan attacks easily. So that 40... That, 21 days turns to 21 months turns to 40 years. But finally, finally they enter the land of Canaan. So we have 400 years in the biblical history of the Jewish people in Canaan. And really it's a period led by the judges. Um, Joshua was the first. uh, Samson was one of those judges. And Samuel was the last of the judges. And he anointed the first king of Israel. So there's 120 years we read in the Bible... Uh, of the United Kingdom. Saul was the first king. He had problems. <laughs> Wasn't successful. King David, righteous guy, you know, the fall, Psalms comes from him. We have lots of, of, of content from, from King David. But still, he wasn't able to lay the foundation for the temple. And finally, Solomon was. Amazingly, now God has a nation centered on God. He has the temple established. This is a perfect time for God to send the Messiah. Unfortunately, 
Solomon is faithless. No matter how smart he is, he's got many wives, he builds altars to their other idols and like that. So all that is lost. How painful this is for God, right? Right at that time, he's, you know, the chosen people, he's invested so much in them, and then it's lost. So then they go through another 400 years in the Bible where the kingdoms are divided. We have the kingdom of Judah in the south and the kingdom of Israel in the north. And this is the time of the major prophets of the Old Testament uh, go, coming from the south, going up to the north. This is the, like the book of um, Isaiah. Uh, and Jeremiah is one of the, those last prophets. At the end of this time, he says, look, you know, at some point, the kingdom of Israel, the north, they're completely destroyed. They're called the lost tribes of Israel. He comes to the south. And Jeremiah, he's called the weeping prophet. Because he's got to bring the bad news to him. He says, look, God's given you chance after chance after chance. But now you, you, have, to, you have to pay indemnity. You have to, you have to go 70 years of suffering. So just buck up and do it. God will never let you go. God is always going to be with you. But you have a, a price to pay. This is all in the Second uh, Kings where it, it, it outlines all this. Anyway, they spent 70 years in Babylonian captivity. This is the time of the books of uh, Daniel. We hear about uh, Ezekiel. And then eventually they re- they're able to return. And there's 140 years where they're getting themselves organized and rebuilding the temple. This is the time of uh, Haggai, uh, Haggai um, Ezra, Nehemiah, and the books of Malachi uh, in, the, in the Hebrew scriptures. So these are all reformers trying to really bring people back together to prepare for the Messiah to come. This is the whole purpose of the Jewish people is to receive the Messiah. But even then, God needs more time. So we have 400 years that God spends preparing the world, tilling the soil, so that when Jesus comes, the world will be able to receive his message. So God raised up Buddha, uh, Confucius, Lao Tzu, Zoroaster, even the Greek philosophers in Rome, and, and the development of Rome, the Roman Empire to unite the world through, through uh, communication and transportation. So this 400 year period is all preparing the world and the Jewish people for the amazing thing, the coming of the Messiah. So we have the 2,000 years from Adam and Eve to Abraham. Then we have 400 years of suffering they spent in Egypt. 400 years that they're led by judges. Another 120 years where they have a united kingdom. And the Messiah could have come at that time. Except for their faithlessness. Because of that faithlessness, then they go a prolonged course. Divided kingdom for 400 years. North and south. Eventually the north is destroyed. Then the south also falls to the faithlessness. They spend 70 years in captivity in Babylon, 140 years, 210 years, till finally they come together, and then another 400 years to prepare the world for the Messiah. And then, in Luke, we read, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. Hallelujah! Right? Can you imagine God jumping up and down, right? It's like all this time I've been working so hard and the people go up and down and faithless. But finally, finally, everything is ready. And he's, God can send Jesus Christ as the Messiah. What a joyful day is that, right? That's what we're celebrating. That's what we're celebrating. So, you know, 4,000 biblical years of ups and downs and difficulties and trials. And finally, God has that precious foundation for the Messiah to come, for Jesus Christ to come. That's what we're celebrating. Not just a moment, oh yeah, God decided that day to do it. No. All the sacrifice that went before Jesus for us to celebrate now. So, that's what we're celebrating. Not the, the Jesus coming was the culmination of so much that went before. So let me conclude with this. This is, uh, again, from Father Moon, his sermon, Let us celebrate Christmas on behalf of heaven. 
By virtue of Jesus' birth, the providential will that God had been working to fulfill for 4,000 years since Adam had come to pass. Due to one man, Jesus, the worries of God, the worries of humanity through the course of history, and the worries of that time could all be gotten rid of. We stand in awe of him. Amen? Amen. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Father, Mother, God, our loving Heavenly Parent, during this uh, Christmas season, we are so grateful that we have the chance to celebrate and rejoice and remember the joy that you felt when finally Jesus Christ could come. When finally you had a true man on earth, a landing place where your will could re- truly be done. Heavenly Parent, we pray that during this Christmas season, we can, we can bring you joy through our celebrations of the, the decorations and the parties and the food and the, the pr- presents and gifts. All this, Heavenly Parent, can be something that brings comfort and joy to you as we celebrate the most precious gift that you've given to us, Jesus Christ, your Son. So we pray, Heavenly Parent, to your sons and daughters, gratefully that this can be a beautiful, a glorious Christmas season. That we know there's lots of suffering in the world, but even at this time of difficulty and suffering, there's this bright light of hope that came 2,000 years ago. The foundation that we stand on in all that we do. So we thank you and offer up ourselves again gratefully to you as your sons and daughters, as blessed central families. Amen and adieu.